Hi guys! I just want to let you know that as of last Friday, I am an Associate Fellow of the Higher Education Academy. So today I want to talk to you about applying for Associate Fellowship or Fellowship of the HEA through the Teaching Recognition Program. I applied through TRAC, Teaching Recognition at King's, through King's College London, which is where I did my PhD. Um, but you can apply through the HEA directly through my academy. So I found this a really valuable thing to do because it forced me to think about the way that I teach and why I teach the way that I do and my growth as a teacher. I first taught undergraduates when I was an undergraduate and I didn't really get any guidance. So I taught the way that I had been taught and was still being taught. Um, but it, it didn't really occur to me at that stage that I should be thinking about the way that I construct my classroom, essentially. And I've grown a lot as a teacher. Um, and I really love teaching. I enjoy teaching. Um, I enjoy the process of going through learning, um, witnessing learning, and I particularly love teaching first years. Uh, I know that's not a very trendy thing to say, but I really do. Um, and that comes back in part to what I was saying before about actually figuring out what I mean by research-led teaching. Research-led teaching is a phrase that pops up in person specifications for jobs in probably every single job that I have applied for ever, academic job that I've applied for ever, that has a teaching component, has talked about research-led teaching. But to me, there's so much more about research-led teaching than just like teaching my research interests. And I realized, I figured out that actually what I think is research-led teaching is research-oriented teaching and research-based teaching. And those two things are different but very compatible. Research-oriented teaching is, as it sounds, teaching which sits at the forefront of research and also incorporates teaching as research. Um, and so students are always getting, you know, fun, interesting, up-to-date, cutting-edge, research-oriented modules. But I also think that research-based teaching is really important and that is <sighs> research as learning. Um, even at first year level, I think that this is more than possible and it comes through in the assessments that we give and the way that we describe those assessments and the expectations that we have of students from those assessments and that all has to be communicated clearly uh, but it also comes from in-class activities it comes from encouraging peer and self-assessment ongoing peer and self-assessment and showing students how to do that, showing students how to construct, giving them the tools and letting them get to the answers for themselves. Um, and I think that almost everybody pretty much would agree that that is the way that we should be teaching in higher education. Um, in some cases it doesn't work, obviously, uh, you know, intensive language, um, or, or any language, um, and it probably, I'm not sure, I haven't thought too much about how it kind of translates into sciences, but I guess that that's what they do. I'm not sure. If you're a scientist and watching this video, please send me a comment about research-based teaching in science. That would be really interesting. Um, please do. Um, so in that respect, having this time to go through to allow myself to think about my teaching philosophy um, and read pedagogy research which i had kind of always dipped in and out of particularly classics ancient history based pedagogy research but like 
more was really interesting and it really helped me clarify how I think and feel and act as a teacher and also a big part of the process is not just this is what I do but this is what I do and this is why it works or this is why it doesn't work and this is how I can change it to become a better teacher um, and that's something that I think probably all academics certainly every early career academic that I know is constantly striving towards self-improvement um, so finally I want to say a bit about why recognition from the Higher Education Academy is worthwhile. Uh, whether you do it through a teaching recognition program or you do it through a coursework based program. Um, every job that I have applied for this year has listed in either the desirable or the essential person specification higher education teaching specific recognition and that doesn't necessarily mean recognition from the higher education academy it could be any number of things but recognition from the HEA satisfies that requirement uh, that is certainly not the best reason but as uh, in the post PhD non-permanent job wilderness um, doing the things that we can to sort of better our chances are all worth doing um, and shall I end with an ominous mention of the TEF hmm no I don't think I will uh, on that note, the next probably month of videos are all going to be probably about my Athena project, um, about weaving and Athena and the Panathenaea and actually how taxing is it on an 11 year old girl to weave on a stand up loom? Uh, these are all questions I'm asking myself at the moment. So if you're interested in that or interested in hearing more of my thoughts on research practice or pedagogy, um, all these things I'll be coming back to, please subscribe. Uh, please let me know if there's something specific that you would like me to talk about, something particularly PhD related or early career academic related. Um, and if you've got any questions about applying for associate fellowship or fellowship of the HEA through teaching recognition, please leave them below. Um, when it comes out, I'll link to the CUCD article and I'll put a link to my application so you can have a browse. Um, and I'll see you next week. Bye.